Every now and then, there's a list of tiny little habits you can do that dramatically will change your life. The question is, how do you actually know what habits are likely to change your life and those that are not? I mean, YouTube is filled with all kinds of videos on the little things you should do, and they probably aren't going to have a great effect. In this video, I thought I would share five habits that are specifically for your health from the profession of traditional Chinese medicine and how it can help you live a better and healthier life. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Alex Hine, board licensed acupuncturist and doctor of traditional Chinese medicine and author of the health book, Master the Day. So let's jump in. So practice number one is something that I call with my patients, learning to spot the subtle body. Now, when I say the subtle body, you could think of this as qi, that sometimes people translate as energy. I don't like that translation, but you could think of it as this idea of, if you imagine someone who has developed a tumor from cancer, just imagine there's research showing that the time it takes to double a tumor size ranges from one month to six years or longer. At some point, if we go all the way back, years, five, 10, 15 years, there's a point at which a woman's breast tumor, all the precancerous conditions, the cellular changes, there's a point in which that is unmeasurable by any known technology. You cannot feel anything different. There's no technology on earth right now that can measure that, that can accurately predict it. So what is the way we can prevent that? Well, cancer is a dramatic example, but let's say other conditions, like let's say you have anxiety and sleeping problems. Spotting the subtle body to me means developing an acutely attuned awareness of how your body's feeling. Now, I know this is kind of corny and it may sound a little cheesy, a little bit therapy-like, but the number of people I've seen come in with signs and symptoms of pathology for three, five, 10 years before a serious medical diagnosis, whether it is autoimmune disease or cancer or just severe acid reflux or they're on antidepressants, is a lot of people. Which leads me to believe that we are not as good of a judge at perceiving the little things, canaries in the coal mine, while they are still little, and we are much better at only seeing things because we are moving too quickly in life when they become a big problem. Learning to spot the subtle body, it's noticing, you know what, tonight I overate a little bit, maybe I should take a little formula supplement blend, an herbal blend for the indigestion because I know I'm not gonna sleep very well. I can do this for a little while, but if this keeps happening, I know over a week, I'm gonna start getting depressed and I'm gonna start not feeling well. The subtle body awareness can be trained from meditation, qigong, and other inner cultivation practices. The second practice is that there are seasons of life and seasons of healing. You know, ancient doctors in this profession, one of the first chapters of our medical classic called the Yellow Emperor's Inner Classic, talks a lot about this idea that the cultivated and long-lived person adapts themselves to the seasons, the quality of the seasons, right? They use the qi of the seasons, the quality. In winter, it is natural in a temperate climate to go inward and hibernate. Look at what animals do. Look at what nature does. These are the animals that have evolved for a much longer period of time than we have to survive. And they don't have technology. They don't have tools. They don't have medicine like we have. They know how to live in harmony with what is because to go against that produces disease. There are seasons of life and there are seasons of healing. Maybe you're in a season of life right now where you need to get things done. You need to study extra hours because you're going to grad school. You need to work two jobs because you're a single mother. You need to stay up a little bit later to take care of domestic duties that someone's got to do. There are seasons of life. And these seasons of life do not mean you should always stay in an eternal summer where you're always pushing and working hard and trying to get things done. It means that after summer comes fall, where we start to decrease our resource expenditures. And winter, the ultimate hibernation mode, that is where you should go into storage mode, where you should decrease your energy expenditure, sleep longer, shave off those projects that are taxing you, and really in general, just go much more inward and try to gather your resources, not always be expending energy. The seasons of life and the seasons of healing are all about the idea that, you know, for some of us, we exist in this eternal summer, always doing, always going, always pushing hard, always trying to make things happen. And in reality, that's not how we're designed to be. We're not machines, we're animals. Now, sometimes it's hard to know what you should actually be doing or what your symptoms are actually indicating about your health or where those symptoms are coming from. Well, I've actually put together this free root cause quiz. It's the first link right below this video, and it will help you understand what are signs and symptoms of certain organ dysfunctions, like the spleen and the pancreas. Lots of issues with bloating and food babies and loose stools and food allergies are what Chinese medicine calls spleen sheet deficiency. Now, it really isn't your spleen, but the formulas clinically work amazingly to treat these symptoms. So if you know where the symptoms are coming from, you can treat the root. 
And this quiz will help you figure that out. It also links to a lot of our other great videos we've put together on these topics. So try your best to go download it, the first link below this video, and it goes great with this. Now the third principle is understanding the flavor and nature of foods. Traditional Chinese medicine, the nutrition of the food is important. But in the West, we exclusively focus on the biomedical parameters, like this food is high in these nutrients. It's high in protein or fats or carbs, the macronutrients. But in traditional Chinese medicine, we focus on what's called flavor and nature qi and wei, or wei and qi. And what these mean, flavor is like sweet, sour, salty, bitter, etc. And the other one is more the temperature. Is it cold? Is it warm? Warming would be something like ginger. Cooling would be something like lemons or lemon juice. For a lot of us, you know, we see, for example, the medical medium says to drink celery juice, and yet we don't know that our condition, low appetite, loose stools, food allergies, a lot of just indigestion and food sitting in the stomach, weight loss, is what's called stomach cold in Chinese medicine. And it actually responds to stimulating warming spices like ginger, cardamom, clove. So we're doing the opposite of what we should be doing and it's no surprise then why we're bloated, why we're getting looser stools and why we're not feeling that much better. The flavor and nature of foods is very, very important to keep in mind. Principle number four is applying yin and yang to everything in life. These cultural concepts of yin and yang, they're not just esoteric, they're clinical too. Yin, for example, would be rest and yang would be work. But also people's personalities and temperaments and even genetics are more yin or more yang. Some people, you deprive them of sleep, they get more and more and more and more, and more anxious. They are an anxious temperament. They genetically run more on the anxious side. If you expose them to high stress, they tend to lose weight and lose appetite. That is that a manifestation of the tension in the body. But for other people, they're more yin by nature. Under stress, they sleep longer hours. They eat even more. They have lethargy and they're fatigued and they have a hard time getting motivated to exercise. These people have different weaknesses and different Achilles heels. So for example, I know for me, my temperament, my personality are more yang. I'm animated, I speak quickly, I think quickly, I eat too quickly, I move too quickly. There is this kind of frenetic excessive movement in my nervous system. And so I need to align my life with more yin activities and more of a yin life. So what that means is that I need to be careful of work hours, of substances like coffee that generate too much yang stimulation. If you are more yin or more yang, or right now, this moment in life, try to make your life your medicine by orienting your diet, how much you sleep, your work, and the foods you consume, even like coffee. Is it creating too much up or is it helping you with more down, right? That is yin and yang pragmatically on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, the fifth principle is Taoism and what I call the inner path of surrender. You know, when we talk about traditional Chinese medicine, we're talking about a medicine that developed as part of a culture. Just like what you are learning when you go to see your primary care doc, what they're giving you is a manifestation as a product of the culture. If you go to see a physician in the US, while they may use many of the same medications as in Europe, they may have different principles. You may see medications way overprescribed in the US. Even though they may have roughly the same training, if you go to Sweden or Norway, they may not be overprescribing antidepressants or PPIs if you have acid reflux. There are wide ranging differences in screenings and how often to do them, medications and how often to use them, and even which medications. Consider that a lot of this is the product of our culture. But a lot of what I've come to know in terms of my own healing journey is a lot of the way we are is because of our culture. So if you live in America, it often rewards hard work and discipline. And if you're in maybe, let's say, Southern Spain, maybe leisure is more highly praised and taking time off work and being with your family. But for me, what has helped me quite a lot is studying the principles of Taoism, which talks a lot about letting a go, non-attachment and surrender, and really not trying to force everything to happen in your life. You know, for me, my personality is very young, as we talked about. I wanna get things done, I'm running a full private practice, writing books, shooting videos. It's an exhausting amount of work for one human being. But I've seen that studying these principles of learning to let go, learning to surrender, learning to not try to control every outcome, learning to do my best and surrender the rest, and learning to just get 1% better every single day has made a dramatic difference in my actual mood and my quality of life. And I think that's probably true for most Americans today and people who are overdoing anything in life. A lot of what we're trying to do is be disciplined and trying to make things happen by forcing them and strong arming them, but we're not letting go and trying to find that more intuitive, that more almost feminine energy approach to our goals. What draws me? What tugs on me? What does my gut say? These principles can really help you be successful while also not killing yourself from stress. So 
five principles that have really helped me. Again, if you guys want to be a patient of mine locally in Los Angeles or virtually via telemedicine, mm -hmm. I work with a limited number of new patients every single month. You can go to dralexhine.com forward slash clinic or there's information in the bio here below the video. And then don't forget, we've put together this quiz. If you click this little card here, you should be able to download that for free. And I have another related video on this exact same topic right up here.